Welcome, everybody. This is the Thursday evening webinar. We are here to talk about trading futures markets using the Viper tools. And first, we've got to go ahead and knock out our standard disclaimer. The uh, topic tonight is clearly see trade entries ahead of time. And we're going to work in a little bit of um, uh, uh, other things like market conditions and things like that. This is this is number one of a two-part series. So tonight we're just going to more or less sort of cover the basics and lay the groundwork, and then uh, and, and show some trades, obviously. Uh, and then number two will be Saturday morning at nine o'clock Pacific, and we'll get into a little bit more advanced topics in that one. So without further ado, all communications from Viper Trading Systems are for educational purposes only. Futures trading does involve risk, and there is a risk of loss. Nothing contained in this webinar, other webinars, including the live trading room, are to be construed as investment or trading advice. And, of course, everybody in here does know that you do trade at your own sole discretion. So funny thing here, i got to talk to Gary about this tomorrow. <laughs> and I mentioned this before. This is how lazy we are on this silly thing. Look down here. It's February of 2019. And look at this copyright. Oh, my goodness. It's still 2017. Lord, Lord, help me. We got to try to fix that tomorrow. I got to remember, somebody please ping us in the live room to fix that. I just, I never, you know what happens? I don't notice it until I start a webinar. And then, anyway, you get busy and you forget about stuff. Uh -huh. That seems how it goes. Anyway. All right, let's get over to screen one. Uh, where I have an ES chart awaiting. So I'm going to work backwards. I'm going to I'm going to use ES as an example to uh, to, uh, to to show some obvious thing. Yeah, Lewis, if you could remind us in the morning, anybody to say, hey, you know, a disclaimer, put 2019 down there. It's kind of funny and sad at the same time, huh? Um, yeah. So let me start with some obvious, and then we'll work our way into into um, you know some more advanced topics even tonight here that uh, may or may not be quite as obvious. Um, and uh, so we still have a lot of people uh, on a, a free trial and visiting us this week. Welcome, welcome. Uh, you will be invited to the room tomorrow and Saturday morning. So that'll be the last two days of your of your week with us here. And um, so what we do here at Viper, we uh, everybody knows, of course, we trade the uh, futures markets on an intraday basis. This is not your, uh, you know, buy Apple and hold it for 10 years program. We look to take advantage of intraday volatility. So that volatility means markets moving up and down and capitalize on that movement in the correct direction. And um, what you're looking at here is, uh, of course, we're connected to the, the data feed to our uh, Ninja Trader brokerage. Uh, this is the E-mini S&P futures contract. Each point on here is worth $50. And between each point, there are what's called uh, four ticks. Okay, so tick one, two, three, four, and then you get another point, and each, therefore, each tick is worth $12.50. Um, this data feed is running into a four range chart where we have what's called the Viper indicators running which are the, uh, of course, the background colors, the bar colors, uh, the power meters here, which show the trend, uh, predictors, the swing levels, and then the elephant in the room, of course, is, uh, is the bands. Now, at a very high level, you know, if you're looking at this for the first time or you're still kind of new or you just got a, you know, an evaluation account and you're trying to get funded, whatever stage you're at, a good way to look at this this uh, trading program that we have here is that three locations on these charts feature very prominently in our trading decisions. And let me explain what that is. Uh, the largest, so we have these bands. We got one, two, three, four bands uh, below what's called the thick mid band here, and one, two, three, four bands above it. And so I'm going to highlight a couple of things here. The mid band is this band right here, right? Line two is the thin red line down here, named so because it, it sits atop of band two. That's pretty obvious, right? And then we have what's called line six, 
right here. Now, each of these come into play in, in, in somewhat different uh, regards. Now, let's examine this area right here. Here you can see that the mid-band is flat and sideways. You can see we're more or less in a range, yes? We've got resistance up here just above line 6, support right around line 2, and we're just oscillating between it. Now, let me give you some perspective in time where we're at on this. Midnight Pacific time here in California is uh, right at this line right here. So this would have been last night, uh, or no, yesterday morning. Yeah, okay, so here is the 6th. Okay, so this would have been uh, Wednesday, the beginning of when, so midnight Wednesday was here. 6.30 is the open of our equity markets, and that would have been right about in here more or less and then uh, and then and then this is uh, this is uh, in the overnight session is called the Asian session of course everybody knows that and then into the uh, midnight early hours of here is the European session so you everybody knows here that the that the um, futures markets trade 24 what is it 24 six and five and a half I would call it so they start open trading on Sunday afternoon around three o'clock pacific and then they stop trading at 115 on friday so they're closed on saturdays and sunday mornings but other than that they're traded all over the world and you can see that what happens overnight can and often does have an influence on what happens during the trading day itself let's look at some examples and this is why it's important that this is a good starting point a good jumping off point if you're trying to learn what to do as far as trading the futures are concerned Let's look at yesterday first. Now, between midnight Pacific and all the way till about 8 o'clock here was ES trending T or range bound R. I'm talking about this area right here in my cursor. T for trending. R for range mount. 8 o'clock is about here somewhere, and midnight Pacific is here. So this was this was uh, overnight in the in the uh, European session and into the f first uh, hour and a half of the U.S. equity market open. Yeah, it's clearly range bound. Range bound. What do we mean by range bound, and how would you know that in real time? So let's go back. I haven't uh, explicitly pointed this out. In, in some, some some webinars, but it's critically important. Now, let's suppose that you start looking at a market, any market, before it opens at 6.30. This is one of the very most important things to do when you prepare yourself to trade for the day. Anybody know what it is? So when tomorrow morning you fire up Ninja Trader, you connect to your thing, you get your cup of coffee, you know, your, your, your dog's all settled in next to you there, and you're ready to start doing some trading, and you look at the chart, and, and you pull up ES, and it looks just like this tomorrow morning, you know, like, you know, 10 minutes, whatever, 15 minutes before the market opens. You get ready to go into, uh, Gary opens the live trading room, 555, you're ready to jump in there, start looking for some trades. What is the first thing you should do on the charts that are sitting on your desktop right in front of you? A number one priority. It's the first thing I do as soon as I start looking at the charts. When I log in and I boot everything up, you put lines at support and resistance. That's exactly what we do. That is critically important. So if we were going to put some lines on this chart, it might look something like this. And here's the thing. You want to just do your lines in a very, you know, uh, straightforward manner. Here's the support level down here. And you just look for swings, right? You just look for some swings. And there's some, some, this is, this is the market hasn't opened yet on yesterday morning, right? 
And then if you come up here at the top of the of the trading range, you can clearly see you've got some swings up here and another one right up here. Now, why do we do this in the pre-market session before the equities start trading? Why take the time to put these lines on there? I mean, is there any significance to them? Is it going to impact how we're going to trade that day? Um, why is it important to do this? Yeah, it gives you the current market condition, the current market state. So let me put this down here. Um, and, and this is actually, uh, as I said a little bit earlier, this is the starting point for you in the morning if you're looking to trade futures and you want to learn how to do it pretty in a very quick and straightforward manner. So the important thing to do, it's important to place support and resistance lines on your chart now we're gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna work through yesterday and then I'm gonna do the same thing for this morning okay and you're gonna see distinct differences between the two mornings uh, resistance and the and, and an important thing to take away here is before you start trading Right, so that's that's first thing in the morning when you log in and you pull your charts up. And before you go in the room, you don't look where Gary put them and then try to copy what Gary's doing, okay? I mean, you can do that if you want. That's there to help you. You know, if you're having trouble seeing the lines or the support resistance, you can't figure it out, by all means, you can do it. I'm not saying don't do that. But it would really be good if you could develop the skill set to do it yourself um, before you start trading. All right, so now we got our uh, we have our uh, uh, support and resistance lines on the chart. Now, before we start trading, we have a saying in regards to these lines. And anybody know what the saying is? Well, I would say that that's true in some in some cases, Daniel. Uh, like if you have a news event like like uh, like unemployment numbers, if the Fed's coming out with none, you know interest rate changes that day, um, and you're expecting a big roller coaster, you got to be prepared for a market to rip up and rip down. However, what we're doing here is we're preparing for a market that might be range bound for some period of time. Yeah. So what you do is you uh, you this here's what our saying is. Okay, I'll just I'll just share it with everybody. Okay, as long as a market remains within the confines of the lines, right, you are said to be what? Fill in the blank. As long as we remain within the confines of the lines, we are said to be, right, starts with an R, range bound, S, sideways, right? Now let's not talk about how you're going to trade it just yet because, you know, you know, I, working with so many traders over the years, is, you know, the first thing is like, oh, hey, I, where can I start making a ton of money trading this stuff? And what happens is then they wind up skipping over the basics. You know, it's kind of like trying to put a roof on your house and the foundation's not in, you know, and you're trying to just you know, you're jumping to the end. We got you got to build the foundation. And the foundation is this. As long as it remains in this, you are range bound. And then you can talk about recording. There's very few gaps that happen occasionally, David. Where you would see more gaps is um, like on a Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock after the market's been shut down since Friday afternoon. You might get a, and you often do, you know, get a huge gap up. You know, maybe something happened over the weekend, some kind of news, tariff news, whatever. And, you know, the market didn't like it. It'll gap way down. But eventually it sort of sorts itself out by Monday morning. Now, let's let's go ahead and advance this chart and talk about what we're seeing. Gold did have a nice move today, Robert K. That's true. Okay. All right. So let me, I'm going to advance it here. We're at 646. And I'm going to just ask a question. Are we still in the range? I'm going to keep advancing it while you're watching it. We're not talking about how to trade it. Are we in within the confines of the lines? That's our constraint. Yes. This is our, this is our guiding principle in looking at ranges in the morning. Okay. Here we go. Seven o'clock. 
8 o'clock, 8.15. Are we still in the range, yes or no? Okay, 8.45, 9 o'clock, 9.30. You get the idea. There's 10.30, 11, and we're coming up 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock. There's the close. Okay. Now, some mo markets are more prone to do this than others. Um, ES is a good example of a, a range-bound market. There are many, many days where ES will trade in a range. Sometimes it's a big range. Sometimes it's a small range. Sometimes it's really not a tradable range, and you just have to sort of stay out of it. Uh, welcome, Gerardo. Didn't you sign up today? You're already at your first webinar. Good for you. Congratulations. Welcome to the team. Good luck to you. If you follow along, you can start making some money. So, yeah, so that's, you know, in, now uh, now here's here's how you got to look at it. And this is the critical takeaway. If you remember anything from what I'm showing you right now, Lewis and a few other people say welcome to Gerardo. Welcome to the team. Now, when you have a large uh, range, and let me explain the difference between large and tight range, okay? From the outer bounds of this range here, you're down at 23, 24 support, right? And you got resistance up here at like, you know, 30, 35, 36 area right here. So that's what, 12, 12 times 4, 48 ticks. So from the very bottom to very close to the very top is somewhere around 40 to 48 ticks. So this, this large range is very tradable, and you can take mid-band trades. Now, what I mean by that is this, is that here's how you can quickly, and you can do it by eye. You don't have to do some kind of, you know, get out of the gonculator and figure it all out. You look at the distance between the mid-band, and I'm speaking directly to mid-band trades, which is, kind of, for most of you, of course, you know, a mid-band trade is kind of pretty much our signature go-to trade, right? And then you look at how far the market could go to the top or bottom of the range. And if there's sufficient distance, and I'd say it's a minimum of 10, 12, 15 ticks, that you can take those trades and make money, right? Now, here's another example where it bipped up. In fact, I think we took this one, didn't we? As I recall, we took a scalpy here, right? Took a scalpy here. As the room was open, we took this, bipped up, hit resistance, came down. We got a little short trade right here, right? Broke support, came up, kissed and rolled. Sure enough, goes right down to the bottom. So the rule of thumb is this. When you do, when you put the, and this is a true of any market, currency, 6 e doesn't, this is kind of a universal volatility concept. If the market is well above 30 ticks, 30 to 40 plus ticks, which in this case it is, and there is sufficient distance between the mid band and the top, and the bottom of the range, you can tr take mid-band trades. Okay, that's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. Now, let's come over and contrast th this area to the left with what happened after about uh, 825, 830 from here to the right. Now, let me, let me, uh, let me, let me, uh, uh, let me take this middle one off just to maybe help you out a little bit. Now that you see the two directly right next to each other, would would taking um, mid-band trades in this area right here, would that be a prudent thing to do? Yeah, let me get this thing off here and go back to the pointer. I'm speaking directly to this area right here where I'm, I'm framing my pointer. This area right here is would mid band trades be a good idea in this range right here? So a mid band, uh, let's put, let's do some examples real quick here. So 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 a mid band trade might look like that, right? Mid band trade might look like you know, I don't know. Let's do a couple more, maybe maybe like that, or like this. There's another one right here. Mid-band region boxes using Object Trader. What do you think? Mid-band mid, mid trades in here in, uh, make any sense? Well, no, of course. You see that. I mean, by the time you get filled, you know, take a box right here, for instance. You know, by the time you get filled, 
with slippage and commission and you go up to resistance, there's no meat on the bone of these trades, right? There's just nothing here. And by the time you fade it to get out, you may, you're lucky if you broke even. Yeah. So let me be clear in summarizing what I'm saying about these two different uh, uh, circumstances in terms of the range bound uh, situation here. And I'm going to start and I'm going to do it as follows. An area that looks something like this, and I'll just put it right up here. Summarizing mid band trades. are acceptable in ranges that are over I I I would say 30 to 40 ticks Because the mid-band generally, you know, and it depends on the instrument and how it's moving and whatever, but the mid-band is usually going to be somewhere around 50 to 15 to 20 ticks away from the mid-band. Oops, let me consolidate this a little bit. Acceptable. And range is over 30 to 40 ticks. Yeah, like that. Right? So that's what we're saying. The distance between the mid-band and the outermost support resistance level allow you sufficient meat on the bone or wiggle room or distance to at least get a scalp off. And if you want to try to get a runner, you could just play it with a tight stop, right? On the other hand, and uh, let's address this area right here, which is quite different than the area to the left. In this area right here, what we're explicitly saying is that no mid-band trades, trades for ranges, and I'm going to go as far as to say uh, uh, of 25 to 30 ticks. It's too small. Oops, 25 to 30 ticks in, in size. Because we know that there's no there, there's not sufficient meat on the bone by the time you get filled with you know slippage commission what have you you get in and you get out and there's no there's just nothing to be made there it's just too tight of a range and now how do you measure that when you put your lines on the chart well you go from the mid band to the you know to the line let's do that real quick let's do that exercise together real quick okay it's done. Doesn't take long. It's a quick, easy thing to do. You look at your mid band sitting right there. It's uh, 2950. Yes, ish. Don't walk up on me here. And here is uh, 32, 3250 is three times four is 12. You know, 10, 10 is, you know, between here and here is, is something like t between 10, 12, 15 ticks. A little bit less here. A little bit more here. Let's look over here. 2950 down to 26. 3 times 4, 12 plus 2 is 14. So from here to here is a total of less than 30 ticks, with the mid band being located right in the middle. So any chart that you, any crude oil this works for, gold this works for, this is a general rule of thumb when you have clearly identified a trading range. It all depends on if you're going to take mid-band trades, it is a function of the size of the range. And you quickly put your lines on it and you assess the distance and decide whether you're going to take it accordingly. Now, that being said, um, that's not to say that you can't trade this range. Quick show of hands, how many of you like trading ranges? Just type in an R. You like trading ranges? If you don't, just type in no. If you don't like trading ranges. Oh, jeez. An overwhelming to the amount of you say no. I'm, in fact, a big chunk of you saying no. 
Okay, second most important question. Hey, Mauricio, tell Bella, my friend. I didn't even see you come in. Welcome. Um, it, uh, you had some late birds coming in here. No problem. I understand. Uh, some of you might be in different time frames where this isn't the most convenient time for you. That's okay. This is recorded. We're going to put it on the web and in the memory tomorrow morning after it renders. So don't worry. And if you have to leave early, don't worry. This is recorded. We'll give, we'll give everybody a shot to get to, uh, to watch it. So here's what I'm going to suggest. Um, it is really important as you develop as a trader over time to incorporate range-bound trading into your trading repertoire. In other words, that should be in your toolbox, you know, and and uh, I know a lot of you, when you see, the, the critical thing is seeing the range before you get sucked into it, right? I mean, it's always easy after the fact, armchair quarterbacks, oh, yeah, it was a range. But let's go back here. So I'm going to show you, I'm going I'm to sort of counter the whole armchair quarterback comment which I hear all the time. Did we draw these lines on the chart when the market was at here in the pre-market session? Or did we draw the lines on the chart when the market was over here near the close? When did we draw the, for those of you that were here, and some of you just came in so you might not know, where did when did we draw these lines? Was it here or over here? Yeah, we drew them in the pre-market session. That's exactly right. So everybody, you see there's a reason we do that now, right? We do them over here for the reasons that you see here. Is it this? Can you see how important that is? In other words, the entire trading day in terms of our approach to this market was framed by the fact that we had drawn these lines at support and resistance before any trading actually occurred. And that is why they are so important. The entire trading day decisions were made by it. Well, this is more or less your guidance, Daniel. You know, I don't know you may have came in late. That's okay. And our, 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 and our, our sort of motto that we, you know, we live by is as long as it remains within the confines of the lines, you are said to be range bound. In this case, it's these four lines right here. Support here, resistance up here. We know before the market opened, the distance between here and here was 40, 48 ticks. So we immediately said to ourselves, hmm, that's large enough where I could maybe look at some mid-band trades, yes? And sure enough, they set up. There's two longs, right? And we always look for a break. You know, we're thrust retracement traders, right? You don't take the thrust, you take the retracement. Kiss and roll, you take the short. You know, and you might have, you know, you might have thrown a little box on over here. I don't know that we caught that. It kind of happened fairly quickly. There's another one right there, which turned into being a long. See, by the time, by the time the mid banded stair step down here, there's a ton of meat on the bone between here and here. I mean, your risk was only down to here. And it popped up all the way almost to the top of the range up here. So that was your that was your uh, one, two, three, fourth trade in the session. And then she went into that sideways motion right here where it was a tight range. So just the last thing I'm going to say on this, and I'm going to wrap it up because I want to get into some more topics here, is this range right here I think is somewhere, what do we say, 24 ticks or something like that, 25 ticks? It's at the very lowest range of acceptability. If you wanted to learn how to do this in sim, you would, be, uh, you would put um, buy orders down here. We have tools in the object trader, you know, touch, touch, plus, all the lines, um, limit orders, all manner of ways to get in down here. You know, put, and then you'd be selling up here. So short, long, short, long, short, long, short. And, you know, everybody knows you got to fade the thing. So you got to come, you know, you find a swing and you come like six, seven, eight ticks above it and you fade it with your buy and sell orders getting in and out. I really would encourage everybody. I know a whole huge chunk of you, probably more than half of you typed in. I, I don't like ranges. Um, and here's what I would say. I'd say give them a try in sim. Pick an instrument that you want to try it on. ES is a good example, mainly because ES is really good at 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 respecting support and resistance levels. You know 
the Russell is not good at that, right? Russell will come down and go way up here, and then you know, things going, and it comes way down here. All over the, you can't draw a clean range on the Russell many times, right? So that's not conducive to range bound trading. ES is very conducive to it. Uh, yep. Okay. What would the risk be? Well, you just put, you know, if you get long here. Well, here's a case where it didn't work out. Here's a case where it didn't work out. If you bought down here, you didn't quite get to the mid band, came down in your box, and then, and then, uh, so what do you do in a kitchen, in a situation like this where you bought? Well, this was after hours, but let's, let's just look at it anyway. So let's say over here, hypothetically, you were trading after hours and you're still looking at this range and you go ahead and buy here like you were looking to do all afternoon. Let's say put, hypothetically you want to try some, some, uh, there you go. You already got it, Lewis. What happens when you get filled? You get up here. I don't know if you got a. I don't know if you got a. You got maybe you got a scalp. Maybe you didn't. Maybe you just missed your scalp it was up here somewhere. It comes back in your box and then it bips up here and you get a two lower highs. And your initial stop, which is your risk. So somebody asked about what your risk is. Your risk is your initial stop. In this case, so let me just let me just be clear on how this works. Okay, so you're gonna you find the bottom, which is like 26, 50, 27. Here's the line. You put your buy orders right in here. That's what fading means, right? So you come above where you're looking to get in. So it comes down, comes up, gets you filled. And then you go, uh, normally on ES, it's either 8 or 10 ticks. So you want to go, you're going to have a stop that's underneath the nearest swing, which is right here. That's your risk. And your return, of course, is up here. And that's your risk when trading ranges like this. I'd wait for a bounce, a bounce, put your lines. So you need at least two to connect, right? So bounce, bounce. It became clear at this point in time, which is right around 8, 830, that the range that ES was in for the entire morning had now tightened. Can you see that? You were no longer going to the outer stretches beyond the bands here. You were bouncing between two and six. So we'll say that in the room a lot, right? Like in the like in the morning, if it's bouncing between, okay, it's pretty, you know, Russell, whatever, is pretty range bound right now. You can see it's bouncing between line two and line six. That's what that means. That means that you're in a tight range, and you, and uh, you might hear a comment like scalp accordingly, or trade accordingly, or pick your spots. That's what that's what we're saying, you know. And then you go in there, and I, you know, I take a couple of sessions and do it do it in sim. Put some buy orders down here. Put your stops down here. Put your targets up here. Reverse it to sell up here. Put your stop, uh, short stop up here. Now listen, okay, and, and now after saying all that, if you trade different instruments in SIM and you find that you don't have any consistency, in other words, you just, no matter what you do, you lose money, then maybe you're not a range-bound trader, and that's perfectly okay. That just means it's, you know, ranges aren't for you. Maybe the larger ranges are, and the trends are. And so when you see a tightly wound market like this, you would just simply avoid it. Yes? Uh, well, let's let's see right here. She's asking how many scalp ticks. Generally on ES, you're looking for, you know, four, five, six at least. Let's take an example down here. Let's say on this one you were filled... Okay, I'm showing mid-band box. We all know that's a no-no, right? So I should really take those off. But you know those are no-nos. We say that. No mid-band trades right here. Okay. All right, let's say you were filled on, uh, I don't know, one of these bars right here. It's uh, 27 and 3 quarter. Uh, six ticks above that would be, well, five ticks would be one plus another 28, 29. 29 would be a five-tick scalp target. You got that right here. Right here, the mid band would be eight ticks. Can you see that? Everybody see that? Same with the short kiss and roll. You get filled at you know 31, 30, 31 and three quarter, 32 short. Mid band's here at 29. That's eight ticks. So it's really a function of the instrument you're trading. And I don't want to sound like a cop out, but you're going to hear that a lot from me. All instruments are not the same. You wouldn't trade oil like this. Okay, oil has complete different volatility than ES. What I'm showing you works on ES. 
It will eventually come out of the range. That's that Robert K. That's true. That's exactly right. So let's let's start to look what happens uh, when it starts to morph into something outside of the range. And now here we're going to do an exercise together, where I'm going to advance the chart as if we're watching it all together in real time. Now, as I advance this chart, when you feel that you see that this market has broken out of its range, and you don't have to say which way. You don't have to say up or down. You don't have to call any trades. You just type in BO for breakout. Uh, you know, I don't – I'll tell you, uh, David, over the years, I, I've looked at I, uh, countless untold indicators, you know, RSI, uh, Bollinger Bands, uh, Volume, whatever, CCI, Shamus, you know, you name it, I've seen it. Okay, and traded it, and I, I have to tell you that over time, what everything you need to trade these markets is right on this chart. And I, to truth be told, you know what I've talked with with uh, traders, and they try to add things to this chart, they just get more confused. You know, because you're looking for confirmation. You know, is the CCI below zero? You know, is the MACD heading up? What's the thing? What's the RSI momentum? And where's the stochastic at? Are we overbought? Are we oversold? Next thing you know, you're like, oh my goodness, nothing's lining up. I can't even figure out a trade. Next thing you know, you know, a 50 tick trade comes and goes, and you missed it because nothing lined up. Ika hula una. Simpler is better. Yeah, now back over here, when you see, and I want to more specifically talk about this buy trade that didn't work out because there was a, a question about this. This clearly didn't work out. Like I said, maybe on your fills, you probably didn't get a scalp out of here. You get a series of lower highs coming in your box. What do you do in a scenario like this? Hit the what button. Tomorrow morning, you're faced with a condition where this happens to you. Do you wait for it to go get a full stop out? Do you just wait? Do you just sit there and do just kind of look at it like, oh, get into a hope trade, drag your stop down, hope it's going to come back and, you know, go way up the top and be the, the, what? What are you going to do? Hit the close button. Eject. Byron, that's right. Hit the eject button. Look, if you can get out scratch. Oh, uh, no, you aren't seeing my cursor. Uh, uh, wait a minute. I think we locked up the screen here. Hold on a second. Where is screen two? Hold on. Okay. Where am I at here? Get, the, get back on screen one. Okay. Cursor moving. Can everybody see cursor moving now? I'm circling, circling the area we are discussing. Cursor moving. Yes. Everybody see it? White cursor moving right around uh, arrow moving around the subject material area. All right, just to go back. So what happened here is, you know, those of you who are trading this range is even in sim, you were buying support to, to flip in the short, buy support to just to take profit, flip in the short. This last one right here, you buy it, even though it was after hours, you're in there kind of looking at it. it goes up, bips up, doesn't quite get through the mid-band. You're concerned about that back in your box. Your initial stop is down here somewhere, right, depending on your fill and where to put it. Do you wait till it goes all the way down here, blammo, through your stop? Now, this was so slow after hours. Between where you entered at 1500, which was 3 o'clock Pacific time, and what we were talking about over here was an hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> you know, we're not talking about like 30 seconds or a minute or 15 minutes. We're talking about an hour and 20 minutes. So you had plenty of time to decide to hit the eject button here. Okay? All right, good. Everybody sees that. Okay, cool. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to do our exercise. And when you see... You can type in B or BO for breakout, meaning that that the market has moved outside of the current range. <laughs> Excuse me, we're going to all do it together. Blowing up the chart. Let me take a quick sip of tea first. Stand by. Just give me one second here, please. Okay, here we go. This was 5 o'clock Pacific yesterday, and here we go. Remember, you're typing in a B 
or a BO on your um, <coughs> excuse me <coughs> when the market has broken out of the current range. Okay, we're coming up on midnight Pacific time on the right hand side of the chart. There's midnight right there. It's the beginning of the European session. Now remember, you're not calling trades or direction. Did it break out or not? Here we go. Okay, 2 o'clock in the morning, European session. The large banks in London and Europe are trading futures. Got their algorithms running. And some of these markets, especially the E-mini S&P futures or contracts, are, are heavily traded overnight. That's 3 o'clock in the morning in the European session. All right, I'm going to stop there. Now, almost all of you typed in B or BO uh, by the time we got done here. So that's, that's pretty obvious. By the time we got to 3.30 in the morning, the, the market had broken to the downside. Now, here's a trickier question to see how you view the volatility that occurred when it did. So, is the breakout from, from the range that happened here at point A, or did it happen here at point B? When did the breakout of the range actually occur? Now that you look back on it with the benefit of hindsight, as, as you can see here, I see some of you didn't even put anything at all because you might have been, you know, in real time, it's hard to see it, right? It's hard to see it in real, when it happens in real time. So now looking back on it, those of you who looked at this, was it point A that it broke out of the range or point B? A? Now, I'm not asking when you would trade it. That's not the question. We'll talk about that in a second, how you're going to trade this going forward. We'll, we'll talk about that in just one second. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about where the breakout actually physically occurred in this market, A or B. Type in a letter. I'll give you five seconds. What say you, team? Three seconds left. Type in a letter. A, it broke here. B, it broke here. Two seconds. Time's almost up. Clear breakout? That's right, Sal. Absolutely. One second. All right, time's up. Now, let's look at what happened here, and let's talk about how we're going to trade that. Okay? Now, you would have to be a night owl and be up in the European session to trade it. Everybody sees that. So let's let's all... Let's suspend disbelief and pretend we're up. We're night owls. Couldn't sleep that night, and we want to take some ES trades. Now, if you go way back over here to 10 o'clock on the day before, and there's a reason I'm going to explain it to you this way, is that you can see that this line held, these lines right here of support, held from all the way on the morning of, let's see, this is Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday morning is when these lines were drawn. Well, we actually drew them right here. But but they've been in place all the way through Wednesday into the morning of Thursday. So would you say these lines are pretty important, having gone through an entire day plus half of the previous day? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're very important. You think people in markets and scripts and what have you are looking at those lines pretty closely? Yeah, you bet. And why is that important? Well, we're looking at them too, <laughs> right? Because for an entire session, that line held the whole day. Now, going back over here, you can clearly see that the first time that that bottom line was breached was right here. So if you said A, you were correct. This is when the breakout occurred. Background is now red. Uh, Mid-band and all the bands are stair-stepping down. So looking ahead, and I'm going to get this line out of the way because I think it's going to be confusing to people. 
Now, tomorrow morning when you see this, even if you're trading in SIM, and you see a condition where a support level is broken like this, and the background is red, bars are predominantly red, uh, band and all the band, mid band, and what have you, are stair stepping down. We are clearly looking for shorts. Okay, I'm going to help you out there. Now, I know some of you have seen it. Maybe you don't remember. If you're going to take a short and you see this condition, where might you look to take it? I'll blow it up real big. Real big, huge. Get it way huge, big. There you go. Okay, tomorrow morning you wake up and you see a condition that looks like this on any instrument where long-term support has been breached. You're clearly in a downtrend and you're looking for short entry. Where might this go to jump on a short? I'll give you five seconds on the clock. Donde esta el baño? Anybody know what that means? Donde esta el baño? <laughs> I'll tell you what. We'll give you bonus points <laughs> if you can tell me, in addition to where you would get the short, if you take, it, translate that statement, that, that little that little snippet I put in there, if you translate that and call the trade entry, you get double, triple bonus points. <laughs> All right, <laughs> time's almost up. Time's almost up. Two seconds. <laughs> Muy loco. <laughs> Where's the washer? All right, cool. All right, so everybody got the, the is, where is the bathroom? Donde está el baño? That's, that's Spanish, Mexican for where is the bathroom. That's correct. So everybody's had that. You get the gold star. So here's what we do. So... There's an old saying, and most of you know in trading, is that support normally becomes resistance, and resistance normally becomes support. So if we live by that credo, we say to ourselves, hmm, this was a long time uh, support area here through all day yesterday, and uh, we got a juicy little mid-band sitting right up here at this 26 and a quarter area right here. So most of you said mid-band. A couple of you typed in numbers. That's cool. And I looked at them. They all look good. So our sweet spot for trade entry is right up in here. So when the market goes down and here's a thrust in the down direction, background is red, stair stepping down. We're looking for shorts. We look ahead. We're looking forward beyond the right-hand side of the chart because the market's not here right now, right? Market's down here. But we're looking up here. And we're saying to ourselves, if it comes up and in, into this area, and this is the important part, and rolls over, we will take the short. Yes? So let's advance the chart. Okay, we're coming up, coming up, coming up, coming up. And it just caught the bottom of it right here. See it? See our target and see where it went? Now, that being said, I have to tell you that this is the secret sauce to trading right there. We can show you where to put lines, support and resistance. We can show you ahead of time, you know, you're looking for shorts around the mid-band. We can even call out levels to you. But until you have to learn to fine-tune your entry, because a lot of times the market won't go as far as you think it will. A lot of times it'll go further than you think it will. And so this is the, this is the sweet spot. This is the juice. This is what's going to make you money, and this is what's going to take practice on your part. Now, here we are at uh, 2 o'clock in the morning. Let me fast forward this. You can see that that turned into be a beautiful trade, right? Let's talk about how much money this trade made. I don't know. Let's say you got in. Let's use some quick round numbers here just to give you uh, some uh, perspective on what you could have made taking that short. Let's just do a quick uh, round number back of the envelope, quick calculation here. So you got filled there, and you got out, I don't know, here. And so the the, uh, the meat of the trade was 
this. So the European traders and whoever was trading this uh, short from 73 and three quarter. Let's use a round number because I don't have to get my calculator out. 24-ish uh, filled short. And you got out at uh, 13. So that's 11 times 4. 11 times 50 is $550 per contract. A two lot there would have made you 1100 bucks. Yep. We have a term for that. We call that one and done. Now, okay, let's suppose, you know, you weren't up in the uh, European session. You know, you happen to like sleep. You know, you're not an insomniac. So, you know, you like sleep. And, uh, so now what happens is, but now some big garbage truck came by at 4 o'clock in the morning and woke you up. You can't get back to sleep. And you say to yourself, you know, maybe there's some trade setting up in the futures markets. I'm going to pull myself an ES chart up, and I'm going to start looking for some trades. And so when you pop the market up, it looks like this. Now, you realize at this point, at 4.11 in the morning, that you missed this trade. You see it, but now you're kind of sad because you missed it. So, the market's sitting down here at a swing of 27.10. If you were going to look for an insomniac short trade, where might you take it? Ten seconds. Market's down here. Based on everything that you've learned and all the training you've done, even tonight, for you newbies, for you guys that are new and you're looking at this for the earliest time, we're not thrust traders. We know that this is the thrust of the down. So I'll help you out. We are retracement traders, yes? So where might this trade go to present you an opportunity to take a short? Five seconds left. Four seconds. See, this is the juice. We're tr this is we're giving we're giving you the juicy part now, right? You saw what to do with ranges over here, so we understand what, how to see them and how to what to do with them, how to trade them. Yes, or not, or not trade them. Is equally important, right? To know when you should trade and not trade. We've learned clearly when a breakout of a range occurs, in what direction. Of course, we see it's down, so you're shorting. And then, so all the markets have thrust and retracement. That's how financial markets work. Thrust, retracement, thrust. And now we think about retracement. And looking beyond the right-hand side of the chart, we see it might go to where? Two more seconds. All right. Time's up. Most of you have typed in numbers and letters and and uh, and um, um, indications that you your sweet spot to get short would be right up in here around the mid band, and I would say that is correct. Right? You can see that there was a little consolidation patch here that it could come kiss, enroll. It's got to get above line two up into this area, anywhere in this area right here. I would consider a sweet spot to take a short. Yes. All right, let's advance the chart and see what happens. Now you tell me, you tell share the team, when you think the short trade has set up, you type in the letter S. Right? I'm going to advance the chart in real time. We're all insomniacs. We can't get back to sleep. It's 4 o'clock in the morning. We want to trade. Right? We're all working together to see to take a trade. And so when you think it's set up, you type in an S. Is everybody ready? Here we go. Advancing the chart. Okay, now we're at 442. We're on our second pot of coffee. Dog's chewing on our leg, trying to keep, get us back to bed. 
540. We've been staring at this chart for an hour and a half or sleep in our chair, but we, all of a sudden we hit our head on the desk and we wake back up. Six thirteen. Third pot of coffee. Your eyes are really bugging out. Six fifteen. Okay, let me do that again. Six thirteen. Third pot of coffee, head on the table, wakes you up. You're looking at it now, you're watching it. Okay, that's it. Almost all of you got this correct. Triple gold star, A++. Your sweet spot was right here. So it's a little bit of a dynamic situation. You can see how this occurs. That is a yellow bar probe right at the midband, Lewis. That's correct. Um, if you say that midband is your go-to trade, then your target is somewhat dynamic, yes? So in other words, your tree trace target would follow the midband down. So in this case right here, it's here. In this case right here, it's here. In this case right here, it's here. Now, as you took that, a couple of you typed in minimum criteria trade, and I do want to back up and say that this did meet a minimum criteria trade. And I don't get too wrapped up because we're getting, we're getting a little long in the tooth. So we're going to wrap up in a minute here. All that means is that you've come above the stealth and line two in the case of the short. Was this a short entry? And the answer is yes. And some of you caught that. You typed in S right here, and that was very good. That was a minimum criteria that gave you a nice scalp trade. Yes, you're right. Um, but the mid-band retrace obviously clearly occurred back up here. So the, the target, as the market moved down, continues to move, and your sweet spot fell right there. Good. And almost every single one of you tonight got this one. So most excellent job in that call. Good. Now, here's 630 right here. Here's 632. So, when we talk about bias in looking at a market at an open, you can see the contrast between where the market traded yesterday, way up here in this range, and the condition you were in here, which is down. So, in this case here, obviously, you're looking for shorts. It's a very different condition than the range. Everybody sees the difference in how you trade it, yes? All right, tell you what, I'm going to leave it right there. I have more I want to cover. Um, we've run a little bit over. That's okay. Let me stop the recorder.